Oh, are they interrogating her? This is the bullet that killed Brigadier General Hughes. It's a 45 caliber. The killer used only this one bullet. Now tell me, what is the caliber of the gun that you carry? It's a, a 45, sir. It's a setup. It says here you fired exactly one shot. What was that round used for? It lists the reason right there on the form. I fired my weapon in defense of Edward Elric while in the fifth laboratory. Fired at Barry, right? Yeah. Hmm. But the fifth laboratory is no longer operational. It remains unmanned. It was definitely not unmanned. Sure, according to your account. Shall I send someone to search for this bullet you say you fired? There was an unexplained explosion at the site. The fifth laboratory is now a pile of rubble. So the place where you claim to have used your gun was unmanned. Send someone to ask Ed. Ed will vouch for her. And what about her partner? And if we look for the bullet, all that we would be able to find is a pile of rubble. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Doesn't look good for Ross. We have eyewitness testimony. You were spotted leaving the scene on the day of the murder at the same time as the shooting. That's impossible! Calm down, Lieutenant. Fine then. So what were you doing at that time? I had the day off. I was at my parents' house visiting. Please check with them. They'll tell you. All you can offer us is your family's testimony. And Ed's. Is as an alibi. Is this guy in on it? Major Armstrong! Hmm? Sergeant Ross. Is this about Second Lieutenant Ross? Yes, that's right, sir. I can corroborate her story. Lieutenant Ross and I both fired around from our weapons at the Fifth Laboratory to defend the Elric brothers. You did? Yes, and it's all written in my report. But everyone's ignoring it, sir. Hmm. Are they trying to frame the Second Lieutenant for this? Yeah, this is not just envy planning evidence. There are more people involved in this. People who want this to happen. It's not Roy, is it? Episode 17, Cold Flame. So, what have you got planned now? What do you think? You and Al have been off somewhere fighting and digging up information. Information that could get you killed like Mr. Hughes. I'd still be here and you'd just suddenly not be there anymore. Like my mom and dad. I'm not sure what I think you should do. I really don't know. You're sure being nice, Winry. <laughs> Why do you sound so surprised? I'm always nice. Stop it. Take that back. I was so good at bringing levity. Ed and Al are kind of in a weird place, because at least the way the show started, there was always something for them to do, like they always had a lead to follow. And then they kind of ran out of leads, and they went back to see their teacher. But here they are again without a clear course of action, and on top of all that, they've experienced massive amounts of tragedy. And Al expressed that he might not even want to continue this quest trying to get their bodies back. And I think that's one of the hardest states to be in, is like not being able to visualize any future or not even knowing where good things will come from. It's really easy to give into total despair in those moments because you just can't see a better way. It's like having a future you can look to is something that I think gives meaning to life and allows you to climb out of really bad states. But what do they have to look forward to? It's like the deeper they go, the worse things get. One thing I like about that scene is Ed asking Winry what they should do because there's echoes of the conversation Winry had with Hughes about how sometimes people hide their feelings because they want to appear strong. Ed is confiding in Winry here, right? Like, the question shows a lot of trust in her. And she deserves it. I mean, I feel like, you know, she's been nothing but be there for them. And she has shown that she has a lot of inner strength, so. It was also really honest of her to say she doesn't know, too. Yo. This guy just in this room playing chess. What? The newspaper? Again? I'm stuck here babysitting you all day. This is the only entertainment I get. Huh? Lieutenant Fallman, calling on an outside line. Please connect me to Colonel Mustang. Yes, that's right. My code is... What's got you so excited? You just trust this guy? You can turn your back on him? Mm -hmm. This is that lady from the laboratory. Barry could corroborate the story. The Philosopher's Stone. People with the Ouroboros tattoos. The homunculi. <laughs> that is me right now. What does it mean? How are they? Yeah. <laughs> Scare me like that. The newspaper, Ed. Read the front page. Mm -hmm. What? Second Lieutenant Maria Ross convicted of Brigadier General Hughes's murder? I can't believe this. Maybe the Colonel or the Major will know something about this. What about Winry? I'll explain it to her later. Time to do some corroboration. I'm not really a fan of these. Quit your complaining. Every stray oh, yeah. mutt needs a collar. What's that? 
What's happening? We've got an intruder. Come on, give us a hand. What? Behave yourself. Got it? I will. What is he doing here? He's still coming at us! Oh, the guns don't even dance him! Hold it! Stay back! Got it. Nice, he finally got the reaction he wanted. This would be a lot more fun if I was allowed to cut him out. Do you think you could let me out of here? Who are you? Just an illegal immigrant from Shing. If you let me out of here, I can help you. Where did you say you were from? Shing, east of the desert. Come with me. I'd be happy to. What's his connection to Shing? So he's here to break up, break Ross out. What? Well, hello there, sweetheart. I've been looking for you. According to the newspapers, you're one guilty soldier girl. It can't be. Right now, it's looking like you'll be facing the firing squad for sure. It's not true. They're wrong. If they would just do a proper investigation. Here are your choices. Stay here and be killed for murder, or bust out of this joint with me. Which will it be? If it's me, I'm staying in jail. How is this happening? Is there anything else I can do? It sure doesn't look like it. I have no choice. Boss, Dad, please forgive me. Fine, let's go. That was awkward. Notify every zone in the city. Maria Ross has broken out. They must be caught. If she resists, the order is shoot to kill. Just keep moving. Lieutenant <laughs> Ross! Edward, Alphonse, what are you two doing here? Hmm? Huh? Ah, you're that guy! And Link, too? Uh, hey, guys. Yeah, all paths are intersecting. All right, sweetheart, take that back alley and run straight to the warehouse district. The darkness ought to hide you. Wait, hold on. Tell us about Hughes. Get going. If the MP show up, they'll shoot you. Lieutenant Ross! Stay back. No, wait. Lieutenant Ross! Oh, no. Is she going to run into Mustang? Don't do it, Roy. You're Maria Ross. Right. Looks like they got her. Hold it. Get back here. Hey there, full metal. What happened here, Colonel? Tell me! Full metal alchemist. Henry Douglas, the jerk. Full metal alchemist. Another casualty so soon? I feel like she made a big mistake by leaving. I mean, obviously. But, like, Ed would have cleared her name. Although, it looks increasingly like she was kind of doomed. Like, it wasn't actually a trial. They weren't, they weren't actually trying to get to the bottom of it. But that's a very dark turn for Roy's character, because now we know he just killed an innocent person. This bastard just killed Ross! What? How could you do that, Colonel? Our orders were shoot to kill. So I did. That's all you have to say? About Hughes' death. I apologize for hiding it. But you do not argue against orders. Or ask for explanations. Just follow them. That's what it means to be a soldier. Damn. Roy definitely has some authority over the brothers, and it's not just his military rank. That's a part of it, but it's not the whole thing. On some level, the brothers owe him, right? And I think Roy deliberately framed it that way, right? Like, I'll give you everything you want. Because we sort of know Ed does not respect military ranks, right? He just is in the military for his own ends. But Roy feels like someone they just can't cross. He has some kind of leverage over them emotionally. Colonel Mustang. You will explain to me what happened here at once. The message went out that if she resisted, we were permitted to shoot to kill. She resisted. No, she didn't. I understand the Brigadier General was a friend. Yeah. He was a good man. Perhaps then it was one of your men who aided Lieutenant Ross's escape. One of my men? But why? Why, Colonel? I'll tell you why. So you could burn her to death with your own hand. <gasps> right. That makes sense. I didn't even think of that. Damn. He's kind of lost it. I think such speculation is best avoided. He knows. I'm 
truly sorry for not telling you about Brigadier General Hughes' death sooner. <laughs> it's my fault. Not everything is your fault, Ed. This murder wasn't your doing, Edward. Dr. Knox. Turning a beauty like her into a pile of charcoal. You must have held quite a grudge against her, didn't you, Colonel? Is the vengeance as sweet as you imagined it? <laughs> the famous hero of the Ishvalan War going this far against a little girl. It makes me sick. This doctor's harsh, but he's right. Colonel, please allow me to apologize for one of my own officer's actions. I could never have imagined that Second Lieutenant Ross would commit such a heinous murder. Oh. She was so straightforward and... He's so trusting. He's such a nice guy, but that makes him vulnerable. He can be manipulated. Damn man, Armstrong just breaks my heart. He's just trying to be a good guy. He's another person who doesn't belong in this world, like all the children characters. After a daring escape, the fugitive is killed by Colonel Mustang, eager to avenge his best friend. The plan was supposed to be designed to get Mustang to behave himself. <laughs> he took the bait. Now he doesn't have a reason to stoop around anymore. Besides, we did manage to sow some animosity. His subordinates won't trust him much after this. Interesting. That was actually an excellent plan. Because now, I mean, for Roy to continue the search, right? That means admitting to himself that he killed Ross in cold blood for no reason. Then again, that's not going to stop him from digging deeper into the actions of the military. You know, because he's aiming for the top. He's going to do whatever it takes. What's this? It's a request for leave. At a time like this? Is that a no? No, it's fine. Request approved. Thank you very much, sir. Even Hawkeye. I wonder how she feels. What were you thinking going out on your own like that? Do you know what the Colonel would do to me if he found out? Oh, pipe down, will ya? Nobody saw me. Don't you get it? That isn't the point. Oh, okay. You're just a helpless soldier held captive by a big bad criminal. So it was this Barry's initiative. What were you supposed to do? Huh? Hey, what are you up to out there? Is this a weird pairing? Signal fire? Signal fire? Young Lord, we've been looking for you. Wow, impressive response time. Hello, Elizabeth. How are you? It's great to hear from you, as usual. Are you sure your assistant won't give you grief for blowing off work to talk on the phone? Nope, the coast is clear. <laughs> so how do you like that? He's whipped. Did you think Lieutenant Hawkeye was? Colonel Mustang's nanny or something. You know, I haven't had a day off since Their I faces. got here, so I'm seriously considering taking some leave time soon. Oh? Where are you going to go? I could use a nice relaxing fishing trip. Care to come along? What do I feel like it's not a simple fishing trip? Nothing is simple for Roy Mustang. Yeah, who is it? What are you... <laughs> Major, what the hell did you do that for? <gasps> This is no good, no good at all. Your auto mail seems to be broken. Uh, okay. Allow me to escort you to Risenbull for repairs. Uh, Major, what's up? You're going back home to Risenbull? I have no idea what he's talking about, Al. Huh? What's he up to? You would stand out too much, so you remain here in Central. Okay. Right. We need to make arrangements for transportation right away. Come along, Edward. Looks like Armstrong is going to give them what they're looking for. Something to do. These are my orders. From him. Okay, I got it. Roger that. Major Armstrong and Edward Elric have gotten aboard the train, sir. Okay. Finally, everyone's out of the way. What is he planning? I was able to locate a witness that saw the man who orchestrated the breakout. Is there any direct connection to the colonel? My money says he's the one behind it. Where did he run off to? He did leave pretty suddenly. And he's good at hiding. In other words, you have no idea. You're useless. I'm short on manpower. It looks like you're finally on. Barry the Chopper. Wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> I'm lost. There's another Barry the Chopper? Are they just making them? So I'm a little bit confused. There's like a lot of mystery behind Ross's death. Did Roy Mustang execute it or did he not? It all seems a little bit convenient that... Barry just broke out and freed Ross and Mustang was just waiting there to kill her. It's very strange. So we've yet another really tragic episode. We have Ed internalizing it as his fault again. And now we have Roy setting up for some master plan. But what is it going to be? 
It's one of many chess moves he's making. Ross's death is really surprising to me and sad because I feel like we didn't get enough time with her. The twisting of the knife continues. Just one knife twist after the other. But anyway, that's the end of this episode. I'll see you guys next time for what is sure to be another crazy episode. <laughs>